so what exactly happens in the recipient who how he is going to process the sequence because ip is a connectionless unreliable service the protocol does not guarantee that packets will be delivered in order and does not guarantee that all packets will be delivered so ip is a connectionless unreliable service agree yes definitely because it is all based on the osi layer and uh, nobody knows how it is just happening how it is thoroughly working nobody knows about this so the protocol does not guarantee that packets will be delivered in order definitely and it does not guarantee that all packets will be delivered so you need to have an acknowledgement for all these things therefore the ip security authentication document dictates that the receiver should implement a window of size w with a default of w is equal to 64 so a window should be there immediately one packet comes and falls inside this window which is maximum limit is 64 64 packets it can receive it should give a acknowledgement so the right edge of the window represents the highest sequence number n capital n so far received for a valid packet for any packet ranging from n minus w plus 1 to n which is received properly the corresponding slot in the window is marked yes some kind of technique is definitely used so every time that packet comes and falls into that window it gets updated and that information is known so this is how that works uh, so we have anti replay mechanism working here and you have the sender sending the packets and this is the receiver who is receiving the packets so a fixed window size is there so as i told you it is of n capital n which is equal to 64 so advanced window if the valid packet to the right is received so you are sending the packet once you are sending the packet it will move towards it so after sending this packet the window will just shift it will come here when it is coming here it will move to the next thing so every time it will just we having a capability of receiving 64 so like this this sequence is processed and this is marked if valid packet is received unmarked if valid packet is not received so if you anywhere you can find out if it is not following all the strict protocols sent inside the packet and if anywhere you find it is suspicious then it will be given a symbol like this unmarked if valid packet is not received somewhere some flaw is there in the packet then this is uh, in white color if all the things are fine then it will be in uh, dark gray color so this is how the fixed window size uh, which is of 64 it moves advanced window if valid packet to the right uh, is received once you get the valid packet it moves to the right so this is how it goes on we have a new topic which is called as inbound processing what do you mean by inbound processing inbound processing works as below when packet is received same thing uh, how exactly the packet is received so this is interrelated with the previous slide which is uh, processing of the packet at the receiver side if the received packet falls within the window and is new definitely if it is a new one mac is checked authentication if authenticated corresponding slot in window is marked just now i told you so the, if it is valid and if it is very much authenticated that particular slot in the window is marked if the received packet to the right of the window if the received packet is to the right of the window and is new the mac is checked if the packet is authenticated the window is advanced so that this sequence number is the right edge of the window and the corresponding slot in the window is marked so if it is correct only it will move forward simple try to understand like this if it is correct it moves to the forward otherwise no if the received packet is to the left of the window it is there on the left side only or if the authentication fa fails the packet is discarded it will never be allowed so it will always be on the left hand side and left hand side packet whichever is lying on the left hand side will be unmarked and the moment it is unmarked it is definitely considered as not to be uh, included in the packet sequence and it will be discarded so this is how the processing of the packets happens at the receiver side and uh, this is the next uh, topic which is uh, transport and tunnel modes so these are the two modes which uh, helps us in transferring the data and uh, the transport occurs with respective to uh, legally uh, just like that illegal i shouldn't say legal actually as per the protocols transport layer helps in the transport mode works uh, it that means as per the protocol what do you mean by the protocol it will pass through the gateway test it will pass through the firewall test and it will transfer the message uh, so from one network to another network when you are sending the message transport layer mode 
uh, authentically or uh, as per the protocol it works tunnel mode is not like that tunnel mode it, it finds some fault in that normal way uh, as per the protocol immediately it will find out an alternate path and transfer the information so what exactly this diagram depicts so the previous slide figure shows two ways in which the IP ESP service can be used. So the, in the upper part, which is uh, based on the transport mode, uh, encryption is provided directly between two hosts. So the, the, as I told you, as per the protocol, encryption is provided directly between the two hosts. Hosts on the internet networks use the internet for transport of data only, not for interaction with other internet based hosts. So what exactly happens in the transport mode is, it uses the internet for transport of data only and not for anything else. So it uses the internet only for transporting the data and not for any interaction, any sort of interaction. It, the crisscross things are avoided. You are, you are destined to talk to one particular network only for data transfer with that particular network you are supposed to do. You can't deviate, you, you, you can't make this happen and also do with something else. So two different multiple tasking is not possible in this kind of things. So, and the bottom figure shows you the tunnel mode operation. So, it sets up a virtual private network. In this example, an organization has four private networks interconnected across the internet. So, if the in tunnels are terminated at the gateway of each internal network, then the hosts are avoided in implementing the security capability. So, number one, what exactly happens in tunnel mode, the difference between transport and tunnel mode, I told you a long time back itself, uh, this uh, undergoes, uh, it doesn't uh, undergo the security protocol like uh, uh, going through the gateway or the firewall, number one. Next, if the tunnels are terminated at the gateway, of each internal network, then the hosts are avoided in implementing the security capability, definitely. Because every time at the, we don't go with the gateway, right? Then why do you want security? They are taking an alternate path. We have our own path. I don't want any rules to be followed there. So that is, it. it, it, it hosts are avoided in implementing the security capability, number two. And next, uh, crisscross talks with private networks. That is also possible in this particular tunnel mode because everybody is legal, uh, authenticated. That, that assurance is given when you are doing the tunnel network, tunnel mode. Therefore, you can have an intercross uh, internet connection across multiple uh, networks. So, how exactly the transport mode ESP, how exactly the data is protected? This is used to encrypt and optionally authenticate the data carried by IP. So, transport mode ESP, this is used to encrypt, yes, optionally authenticate, definitely authentication is not required because this is going into the uh, gateways, routers, firewalls, so authentication is taken care there, no, no need to do it again and again, uh, that can be optional, you still want to do, you can go ahead, but not required, it is already taken care. So, we now look at the scope of ESP for the two modes IPv4 and IPv6. They are the two versions of how the data is transmitted, version 4 and version 6. So, in version 4, you have the IP header, TCP and data, normal, nothing much. In IP6, it is an extended version, right? Version 6, so original IP header, extension headers, if required, TCP data. So, this is how another extension header is included in IP version 6.
and this is about the transport mode and this is especially with the ip version 6 how this happens in ip v4 an extra extra field is there tcp so that is taken care in ipv4 esp is viewed as end to end payload end to end payload from here to here the payload is considered it is considered as a payload in version 6 that is it is not examined or processed by intermediate rotors no or just check the header okay go go no don't do that how much ever vip this particular header is normally what happens when you see that red light car on the head of the uh, on the top of the car it is considered as a secured, it is nothing but a uh, uh, escorted car. Then in that case, uh, you can just uh, allow them. But no, it is not allowed in this case. Whatever the uh, thing is, the uh, scrutiny will go on for the whole of the body. So in IP version 6, ESP is viewed as an end-to-end -end payload. That is, it is not examined or processed by intermediate routers. So ESP header appears after the IPv6 base header. So ESP header appears after the IPv6 base header. So it 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 doesn't it it need not have to overcome this position because the entire check is done. Its check goes on not with just one layer, uh, just with the header, the whole of this thing. So wherever you lie, that doesn't matter. So ESP header appears after the IPv4 base header and the hop by hop routing and fragmented extension headers. So all of this thing is getting checked. The destination options extension header could appear before or after the ESP header where exactly the destination is that happens after the header demanding on the semantics required. So encryption is done for the entire transport level segment plus trailer plus destination. So whole of this thing gets ESP, uh, the whole of this thing gets encrypted is done for the entire transport level segment from header to the trailer and then it is authenticated. So what is the summary for the transport mode operations? At the source, the block of the ESP trailer transport layer segment is encrypted and the plain text is replaced with ciphertext to form an IP packet. Authentication, authentication if required is added. So there is always a header, there is always a trailer, there is a uh, payload and the payload is encrypted and uh, in, in that sense plain text is replaced with ciphertext to form an IP packet that whole of this thing is encapsulated. So encapsulated with the all the information present. So please remember at least four or five uh, encapsulated uh, contents. It can be the ESP header, it can be the trailer. ESP trailer will have what kind of uh, padding you have done, how much is the pad length, all such information. So then the packet is routed to the destination. Only then it is sent. In between router examines and processes IP header and any plain, te plain text IP extension headers but not the cipher text. If any header is there that will be fast checked by the uh, router. Destination node examines and processes the IP header and plain text IP extension headers. So based on the SPI uh, index in the ESP header the destination node decrypts the entire packet and tries to retrieve the plain text. So transport mode provides confidentiality and therefore no need to implement in every individual application. Not every time you have to do this. Once you have done in transport mode, that's more than sufficient. But there is a drawback. What is the drawback? It can do traffic analysis on transmitted packets. Only on the packets which you have sent. Not on all packets. So that is the drawback. We will now look into the summary of tunnel mode ESP. Uh, basically, this is used to encrypt entire IP packet. Yes, we know this. The ESP header is prefixed. What exactly the purpose of the ESP header is meant for? It is prefixed to the packet. It is ahead of the packet and then the packet and the ESP trailer are encrypted. So this helps to counter the traffic analysis. In case any threats are there on the uh, during the traffic, this is taken care. Hence, it is not possible to transmit encrypted IP packet prefixed by the ESP header. So, if the ESP header is there, it, is not be, it will not be possible to transmit. So, intermediate routers are unable to process such a packet and therefore encapsulation to entire block with new IP header having information for routing but not for traffic, traffic analysis is used. So, this is the original uh, uh, transport uh, um, mode. 
uh, and in that case uh, when you have this it is not possible to do the transmission so to overcome that it is associated with a new header so this new header will take care to say that what is the purpose meant for what are the contents inside that and then only it is possible to transmit so if external host wishes to communicate with the host on an internal network which is protected by a firewall and ESP implemented in the external host and the firewall then the following steps are to be needed. That means if somebody who is not in the network wishes to communicate with the person who is inside the network and that network is not protected by a firewall and ESP is implemented in the external host and there are firewalls also then how will it happen? So here in this network there is no firewall. But uh, how will you cross check? How will you allow a uh, foreign particle, a foreign person, foreigner to enter into your network? So what exactly the steps are? The source prepares an inner IP packet with the destination address of the target internal host. So that source, whoever is there, he, that particular thing pr prepares an IP packet with the destination address of the target internal host. This packet has a ESP header already and now the packet and the ESP trailer are encrypted. The resulting block is encapsulated with a new IP header whose destination address is the firewall which forms the outer IP packet. So before sending it to this network, it is encrypted and it is put into an encapsulated, it is put inside a capsule. So it is encapsulated with the header and the trailer along with the encryption. So the destination address is provided there. So this directly goes to the firewall. And this forms the outer IP packet. So the outer IP packet is routed to the destination firewall. Yes, definitely it goes to the firewall. Each intermediate router needs to examine the process, the outer IP header plus any outer IP extension headers. So every router intermediate, whoever is there in between, do need to cross check the security issues and only then allow them to pass. So it processes the outer IP header. It checks what is the header of the outer IP layer. And if any extension header is there, headers are there, extension headers, that also will check. So when it is being transmitted, only the headers are checked and it is then sent. So the destination firewall examines and processes on the basis of the SPI in the ESP header. Then the destination node decrypts the remainder of the packet to recover the pa plain text inner IP packet. This packet is then transmitted into the internal network. Okay, so the entire packet which was sent which was carried by the IP header and the extension header is all encapsulated with the encapsulated information is sent into the firewall. So the firewall will examine and it will process on what basis on the SPI index. So that indexing has to be carried by the header that forms the information to which security association it belongs to. This is present in the ESP header. The, uh, once it sees that, it decrypts the remainder. So it, it allows uh, because it is a authenticated information and whatever is the information is there on the receiver side which has received the packet, it decrypts and it tries to recover the innermost packet, IP packet. So it, it caps, it takes out the innermost IP packet and whoever is there in that network, it will be destined to route there. So it now the inner packet is routed to the destination host. So multiple layers are there. It is encapsulated. So followed by the header. Header is the one who is taking the lead. So every time whenever it reaches the firewall, it is the header which is cross-checked. If there is an extension header, that is also cross-checked. And if the, all these things are, uh, because that carries a legal information. So that is a pass entry gateway. And that will uh, pass, that pass is seen. And once it reaches to the destination, it will see the header and then it says, yes, fine. And it will try to decrypt the remaining information because that possibility is there. And once the decryption is done, the plain text is retrieved and it is sent to the destined host. So the protocol operation for ESP, as we all know, we are in the AEP section, IP security. So this is, these are the different layers, application layer, TCP layer, IP layer and IP security layer. So basically we have the data in transport mode. This is how the transport mode is. In the transport mode, the information goes like this. The original data is there. In the application layer, only this much is there. Uh, so in TCP layer, security is added. Transport layer protocols are added. How it is added to the data, a TCP header is added. Fine, to one extent it is secured. Again, goes to the next layer, IP layer. 
to the IP layer. It has the data, it has the TP header along with that original IP header is there. Fine. It goes to the next layer, IP security layer where further more protocols are added. What are the protocols? It has the data, it has the TCP header, it has the original IP header. Before that, it also has a ESP header. So, encapsulated information, that whole of this information is present in the ESP header. It also has a ESP trailer. Along with the ESP trailer, it also checks for the authentication. So, this is the protocol operation of transport mode. I hope I am clear. Similarly, how it happens in tunnel mode. It has the data in application layer. In the TCP layer, it gets added with the TCP header. In the IP layer, data, TCP header and the original IP header. In the IP security, almost the same. Data, TCP header, original IP header. Here we had in the transport mode, ESP header after the original IP header. But here ESP header takes the lead. ESP trailer at the end and ESP authentication at the least. And again in the IP security layer, again you have the IP layer, it has, it gets appended with a new IP header. So all this security layers are getting added up in order to protect the information. We now look into this uh, next topic called as internet key exchange. Uh, on the internet, how is the key exchange? Basically, there are two types, manual and automated. In a manual, uh, we need to have a system administrator and this is favorable only for small applications. Whereas, if it is a huge system, then we need to ask the security association and therefore, we need to have a management system and this uh, process is called as ISAKMP or OCLE and it contains the following. So this is how the internet key exchange happens through a system and it is automated. So what exactly is the OCLE determination protocol? So this is based on Diffie-Hellman algorithm because Diffie-Hellman is the algorithm which is meant for key exchange and in association with that it is also with the uh, internet security association and key management. So they help in doing the negotiations with the key exchange and following the principles and formats which is necessary for the protocol. Next we have the key determination protocol as I have already told you it is the Diffie-Hellman exchange protocol. So you have two users and Q is defined as the last prime number, alpha as the primitive root and XA as the private key and YA as the public key and they are substituted with the appropriate formulas. So the key is finally given by this formula. Each side can now compute a secret key session and this is how it is calculated. So advantage of this is then and there the key is created and no need to store them and this requires no infrastructure. Therefore it is simple and can be implemented. But the weakness is uh, it is subjected to man in the middle attack that is in the network layer it is prone for attack. A third person posing as A or B and coming and doing the necessary negotiations which is not favored. Therefore, the key is uh, uh, leaked out. Therefore, we need to overcome this. Next, we need to computation. Therefore, it is computationally intensive. And we have an ad other attack called as the clogging attack where the uh, so once the third person has entered into our vicinity, he may be asking for a higher number of keys again and again and it can clog, it can jam. So this has to be overcome and uh, the victim spends considerable computing resources. So as uh, you look into this Diffie-Hellman, it uses modular exponentiation which requires more time. And if you are doing it again and again, the computation resources are wasted. It will take a longer time. So to overcome this, we have a key exchange, internet key exchange uh, procedure where the advantages are retained and the disadvantages are overcome.